All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's the third Wednesday of the month. You know, that means it's time for the unshuffled uh, rec poker mixed game demo. We have a lot of fun doing this every month. There's a different uh, rec, uh, at rec poker. There's a different mixed game of the month. And uh, this month we're going to be looking at limit deuce to seven triple draw. Uh, that's a, a lot of words out there. And if you're used to playing no limit hold them, uh, this is going to be a bit of a different experience for you, but that's what we love about mixed games is all these sorts of exciting, different ways of playing, different ways of thinking about the game of poker. And we're going to look at a few of those today. So I'm so happy to be joined by Jake Hirschfield from unshuffle.io, uh, which is a fantastic platform that you can use to play all sorts of mixed games and, and no limit hold them, of course, with your friends. And uh, they run a bunch of great uh, tournaments and series where you can play for free and win real prizes. And I know he's got some exciting plans coming up for that sort of thing. Uh, but Jake, thanks for joining us, man. I love this monthly segment that we're doing. Yeah, of course. Uh, thanks for having me again. It's one of my fa favorite days of the month. <laughs> me too, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, like a lot of our, uh, a lot of our members are pretty into No Limit Hold'em. And I think they could really benefit from trying on some of these mixed games that we've been looking at uh, over the last month. And, and they will continue to do month after month. So uh, deuce to limit deuce to seven triple draw. So uh, in this game, the point is to make the worst possible hand by the standards that we've been talking about. It's a limit game, so you can only make bets of a certain size, and that's going to change kind of the shape of the ranges that you choose to bluff and value bet with. Um, and it's a triple draw game. So uh, does that mean that you have three chances to draw uh, uh, as you're playing, or is it one draw of three cards, Jake? But talk, talk to us like we're five here. Sure, yeah. It's So it's um, three different opportunities to draw cards. And um, as I understand it, you're allowed to draw as many cards as you want on any given hand. But just keeping in mind that every time you draw cards, you run the risk of pairing making a pair or a set or anything like right. that is bad in this game. It's not, you know, it's a low, low scoring game. And the name two to seven actually uh, is, is the reason why there's a reason why it's called two to seven, because that's the best worst hand is two, three, four, five, seven, um, because straights and flushes count against your hand in this version and ace is always played high. Okay. So if you had two, three, four, five, six, that would be a straight which Correct. is actually a really good hand. Um, and therefore it's a bad hand because we're playing deuce to seven. So That's exactly right. So uh, two, three, four, five, seven would be the best hand. Um, would two, four, five, six, seven be the better hand after that? Or would two, three, four, six, seven be a better hand than that? That's a good question. Um, I think it's similar to the other low games where you go based off of the next lowest card. Um, but again, any consecutive cards are going to be counted as a straight and that's going to hurt your hand. So uh, the best next hand would be two, would it be three? I think two, I think what you said, first one you said. Yeah, it would be two, <laughs> yeah, right. It be, it's complicated to remember it, it is, the it, rules and the card scoring of cards. Yeah, uh, but it would be, it would be two, three, four, six, seven. The gap would be between the instead of being the, the missed Correct. card. So Correct. Your second highest yeah. card would be a six instead of your second highest card being a five, and that's Correct. how you would rank the hands. Okay. All right, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> and. Yeah. Um, do you, is it a typical draw game where you start with five uh, five cards in your hand and there's no community cards? Yep, it's a typical draw game. There's four betting rounds. So uh, everyone's dealt five cards. There's an initial betting round. And then there's a draw round, another betting round, a draw round, another betting round, and then a final draw round and a final betting round. And then at the end, it's just a showdown. Everyone puts cards, who side who wins. Um, and then, uh, as far as the uh, the draw the draw rounds themselves, um, I believe they start with the small blind um, in terms of the draw round. So, player to the left of the dealer. Uh, every yes, time. and because there's no visible cards, you can't go by the strength of the hand to see right. who would go first. Like in a lot of stud games, this is just another one where it starts to the left of the dealer, uh, and they're going to go first on on every street. Right. Um, 
So, uh, and like most games is that like most limit games, is this a series of small bet, small bet, big bet, big bet increments? There's the two betting sizes. Yep. It's, it's actually a relatively simple game as long as you get the scoring down, which it's clearly not that simple for, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But for the most part, it's pretty simple. You know, you have the four betting rounds it's, you know, let's say it was a two, four game. So the blinds would be one, two, um, you know, the, the small, it'd be bets of increments of two, two, and then it would double to four, four. And that's it. Um, and so for the most part, you know, you're just trying to make the best, best hand and there's not a ton of variance in how much you can bet. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it's more of a, whichever, whoever, whichever player has the best hand is, is typically going to win. Right. You don't have a lot of fold equity because you can't over bet. Uh, the largest bet you can make is going to be a pretty small portion of the pot really. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really a question of kind of disciplined value betting and knowing the relative strength of your hand. Um, although again, in a game like this, there's no community cards. So uh it's really comes down to just percentages of how likely is it that your opponent has a hand better than yours and right. kind of reading their betting pattern and you know if they're a star if they're a thoughtful player what what kind of hands are they choosing to bet and race with well i'm excited let's open up uh, unshuffled.io and take this baby for a spin let's uh let's show me, folks at home exactly give me one second my i have a new puppy and he i think oh he's yeah yeah sounds good move the ball and then i'll be i'll be back <laughs> All right. <laughs> so while Jake's taking care of his puppy, I'll just uh, remind our uh, viewers here. So it's limit deuce to seven triple draw. So you're trying to make the lowest possible hand. Uh, seven high is the best possible one. Um, no community cards. All hand. All cards up in your hand. And uh, the, I think the limit limit betting is the one thing that people don't appreciate. Just how. Uh, how different that changes the hands that you choose to, to value bet and which ones you choose to just uh, check back and stuff like that. Right. So we're on Unshuffle. We're going to create our template here. Um, we're just going to turn on the dealer's choice. Um, it will be a blinds game. We added this new feature. We can have antis in, 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 like, uh, as well as blinds if you wanted to play a game where players can't just sit out and you know stay in the game. Cool. This is coming because we're adding a tournament feature. Um, nice. like multi-table tournaments so we're going to need that so we'll do one two to make things easy for us mm -hmm. and that's it so we'll go ahead and click play now i'm going to join the room and then with this room code i'm going to sign in with two other players so let me go ahead and do that real quick and these are just from other browsers I'm at home that i have on um and this way i can and control what's going on in the game um, and Jake, if you're hosting this game on Unshuffled, so that you've got an Unshuffled account, but you can invite anyone you want and they can join the game just by clicking a link break. They don't even have to form a, an account here at Unshuffled. They don't even have to create an account. They can join as a guest and play. Um, and right, so you got to make it easy. You got to make know, it Not easy. everyone's as excited about poker as you and I are. So if you want to get a game going, you got to just make it real easy for people sometimes. That's, that's exactly right. So we've got our players in. You could hear when they were joining. We're going to join. We're going to get some bad audio here in a second. <laughs> oh, we have oh okay. yep. 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 Yeah, there'll be a little bit of that as uh, Jake gets his different, okay. uh, different mics all set up. Cool. So you can see me on the screen down here as Hello. well. Hello. Yep. Hello. I'll turn that off to okay. begin with. Um, and then we'll go ahead and play. So I'm going to go start hand. I created this template from earlier, but um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just five cards. And in this version, I actually just created a blank template with nothing. So there's no community cards. So we'll click two to seven triple draw. Um, we'll load it. And it's going to just show nothing. It's going to show our dealer actions. So to start the game, every player gets five cards. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So. There we go. Nice. So we're going to deal five cards to every player. You could drag cards each player. Alternatively, we'll just deal five cards. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, the next thing that happens is there's a betting round. So we'll just start with the betting round. If you just click bets round, it'll start with the correct player, which would be me since I'm next to the, the big line. Um, um, I'll call. Uh, let's see. What do we have? Three, ace, three, five. Not the best hand, so we're definitely going to be drawing some cards here. Um, yeah, we've got two two low cards to hold on to, and then we'll probably draw three. Is that right? Right. And then with this player, we're going to just oops. Uh, 
we're going to check with this big blind player. Cool. All right. So now is the draw round. So in Unshuffle, we have what's called a turn round because you can really do a lot of different things in a turn round. Um, so when I click turn round, you'll see it's this player's turn yep. and he'll have uh, options to do specific things. So okay. he can discard cards, he could get cards, um, and it's up to the dealer to decide what to do with the cards after they've been discarded. So as this player, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw a few. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of one. I'm just clicking and dragging to the discard pile. Yep. Two, three. And, and then I, I can start. see from our perspective that they've only got two cards left. So that's right. nice and transparent. And then as the dealer, I need to deal this player three cards. I'm just going to click and drag one. Right. Oops. Shades in the holder there, two. Three. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Next player's turn. Um, we're going to uh, just ask for two cards. This guy's got decent cards, actually. <laughs> we'll click done. We'll go ahead and give this player two cards. And then as our group, we definitely want to get rid of a couple of cards here. Ace, queen, probably even the 10 we could probably get rid of, although it's not necessarily a bad idea to keep the no, 10 it's kind of keep in the cards. And, you know, we're we're not in a huge risk of creating a flush. We're not in any risk of creating a straight. So I don't know. What do you think? Should we get rid of the 10 or should we keep it? Let's let's shoot for the moon, man. I want to I want to get a really good hand here. Ten's going away. And then we just give ourselves three new cards. One. All right. Ooh, I like good. Going that one. King's ah, not three. That's all right. We were due. OK. Oh, my. All Pretty right. good. And then we click done. Yep. We do another betting round. Right. And now it'll be whoever is left the dealer. Correct. And so this player, um, let's just say they like their hand, they're going to bet two because that's the, the small bet. Yep. Um, this next player can call, but we're going to raise. Mm -hmm. um, so the raise here is two on top of two, which would be a total bet of four. Yep. So we'll go ahead and bet four. And now it's four to me. Um, and we're just going to call. Now we have the option of raising again if we want to, and it would be in another increment of two, right? So we right. raised a six total. Sure, sure. Okay. Should we raise? What do you think? I think we should just call. Yeah, I believe it. Let's call. Cool. We're basically we're drawing one to pretty close to the to a very strong hand. Correct. But yeah. again, we're just drawing probably one card. Yeah. And and it's we're at risk of pairing our 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 cards here. So right. again, as a dealer, we'll go ahead and click turn around again. This player. Um, only wants one card. Ooh. Yeah. So they're doing pretty well. So they're doing pretty well. And you got to keep, I think that's an important part of this game is keeping track of how many cards people are, mm -hmm. are asking for. Yeah. Because it's sort and maybe even a bluff tactic. Um, you could like stand pat even if you have bad cards. That's a great point. Um, yep. Standing pat being you, you're not accepting cards. Um, mm -hmm. And, and we'll you're at least representing that you have a strong enough hand that you don't want to break it or, or ruin it by uh, trying for an even better hand. Exactly. Yeah, this that's guy one of the great things about, about drop. This guy only, also only wants one card, so we give him one. All right. Well, those are, and we, we only want one as well, I'm guessing. So right. that's right. Three, three pretty good hands going into uh, final. There was one more draw around. Hmm. Ooh, two, three, four. We have a straight. Holy cow. So this is bad. It is bad. <laughs> yeah. But we're very close to something very good. Right. So uh, we're in pretty good shape, I'd say, actually. Um, depending, obviously, that we could pair our last hand, and that would be really bad. Yeah. So we'll do the final betting round. Uh, oh, no, sorry. It's not the final betting round. There's two more. So now the min bet is four, not two. Right. This player is going to bet four. This player is going to raise to eight. Mm. We're going to call because we like our chances of getting uh, a really good hand. Yeah. This player is getting a little scared. Um, but let's just call for the sake of the game. They're getting really good. Another answer. turn round. The last Five draw three. round. Another last draw round. Correct. So this player is done. I'm going to go ahead and give him a card. And then it's this player's turn. He is going to get one card. As well, and it's worth just uh, pointing out again to our listeners here. So, 
each of these players took a card, which means that they had four, I mean, we can assume they had four low cards and now they've got one random card. So that random card could either be a very high card, which would make their hand not very good, or it could have paired one of the hands that they, one of the cards that they already have, which would make it not very good. Or it could be one of the kind of like those middle cards, which is where it starts to be probably a, the best hand going into this. Um, Correct. So that's our strategy as well here. I guess we're gonna we're gonna ditch our six because it's the highest card that we have, and basically try and draw like a seven or an eight or a nine, as if we, if we can try such a thing. Yeah, you know, actually, this is where strategy comes into play a little bit because. Yeah, we want to get rid of our six. That's actually right. That makes sense. The most sense. So let's go ahead and get rid of our six. We get one more card. Let's hope for something good. No. Oh. That sucks. Yep. Um, well, so we could. So now, if we had gotten rid of a, no, it wouldn't have mattered. If we, even if we'd gotten rid of a two, we but still would have. Now we would have straight again. Okay. Nothing we could have done there. Yep. So final betting round. Um, let's just say this player checks. This player is going to bet the max for um, no moving. We're forward. losing to we're losing to any unpaired hand at this point, right? We're gonna, we would fold because we're yes. assuming that someone has an unpaired hand. Um, for the sake of the demonstration, we'll just call so we can sure. share hands. And this player will call. And then, as is the case in unshuffled manual games, we have to declare a winner. So we'll go to end hand, select winners. You don't see anyone's card until they show their hand. So okay. the show hand button, it's gonna raise the hands up, you see. Now we can see everyone's cards. And we can wow. see this player's got three, five, six, seven, nine. Yep. This player has four, five, seven, eight, ten. Yep. And then we have a pair two. So this player BP is the winner. The three, um, five, seven, uh, three, five, six, seven, nine player. Yep. Correct. But a nice array of hands here. This is a pretty good demonstration, actually. We like mm -hmm. had a good, good set of cards. We were nervous about pairing our last hand. We did. It happened to be with the best card in the game. Um, and the other players had good cards. We got to see the, the fixed limit sort of in play. And yeah. then in order to finish, uh, as a deal, you would select a player. If there had been a tie, let's just say, you could select two players. And uh, under and distribute pot, the you can decide the distribution. Um, However, in this case, there was only one player, so we will unclick the player, we will distribute the pot, and then you'll now, see 54 chips. Now, before we uh, lose this screen, if, oh, uh, if we had put a nine, if we had drawn a nine, yep. we would have had nine, seven, six, five. We would have had nine, five, six. four, three, two. And That's so right. We would have won. Our hand would have been better because even though right. we both, uh, our highest cards were tying, the next highest card Ours was lower, and that's how you break the tie all the way down. That's right. So ties in this game are unlikely, I think, is the, the narrative there. Yes. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, that's very cool. And, and even if, they, if they'd had 9765 and we'd had 9764, uh, that's how you would break the tie. It just would keep kind of going down through it. Um, That's my assumption. We, we probably should get that back check, but I, yeah. I, I would assume that. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, no, Jake and I are poker enthusiasts. We are not necessarily experts in every different mixed game out there, uh, but boy, we love them. And uh, we love sharing our, our love and enthusiasm of poker with the rest of uh, rec poker fans and unshuffle fans uh, alike. So, uh, Jake, that's fantastic. Um, I, I hope we get John Somsky back in the room next month. Uh, next month, uh, we'll be going over the next month. And I want to spoil it for anybody. So you're just going to have to tune in uh, when the time comes. What's coming up with Unshuffled? Uh, I know you've got a series of uh, challenges that go on sort of week to week where people can compete for free and win real prizes. Uh, what else? What yeah, else let me on? let me share my screen one more time. Yeah, and, yeah, please uh, do. I can show you. So, um, you know, on Unshuffled, we always have opportunities to play. It's kind of one of our big things. Uh, we just launched our sit and go feature, which is essentially an opportunity for people to sit and play and sit and goes. Obviously you have to have enough people to play to get those started. Um, right. Soon those will have real prizes. So uh, you'll be able to actually play for, for a chance to win like $25 Amazon gift cards, something like that. That's amazing. We have our challenges, which are usually always running. We just, those just expired. So we'll set up some new ones probably this evening. Uh, the challenges are 20 hands against our built AI 
and you get a score based on how you do over the 20 hands. Um, and then at the end of the week, players get um, ranked on a leaderboard and the player at the top of the leaderboard wins. And what does that look like? Well, under the My Challenges tab, you'll see these are unshuffled cup events, but there are leaderboards that look like this. And you'll see we've got awesome. all of these people and then prizes over here on the right. This was a test event, so you can tell there's clearly not the best example. But um, the way that the challenges work is you play, you play the 20 hands, you get a prize, you win a prize at the end of the, you get a score, you get a prize at the end of the week. Yeah, and the last awesome. thing, which I just alluded to, is the Unshuffle Cup, which we're in the middle of the season going on right now. Um, you can see, you go to the Unshuffle Cup, you'll see your points and your statistics. If you go to standings, you'll see on the summer 22 season, we've got um, roughly. Wow, look at that. Say, That's great, man. 798 people. Um, a lot of ties, obviously, up at the top. Sure. In the 1,000 range. But um, these people have been playing for the last, I don't know, three-ish months. And each week we do an event, we give away $500 in prizes. And then at the end of the season, we give prizes to the top 10 point getters. And then we have a championship event with a larger prize, um, which at the moment I think is going to be like five grand. Wow. It's a big prize. Yeah. And uh, we haven't decided exactly how we're going to distribute that prize. It's going to maybe be top 10. It might be, mm -hmm. might be more since it's such a big mm -hmm. prize. Mm -hmm. Um, but you'll see here all these players that have the little spade and the diamond are currently qualified to make the championship event. Ah, the way you qualify, cool. you either finish top 10% in one of the regular season events or your top 20% in total points. So you'll see we've got lots of people that have qualified, which is great. We want the championship event to be a fun competitive. Yeah. And event. I like the way that you're doing that. So people can either play consistently in a lot of the events and do well consistently, or they can perform very well in at least one of the events. And that still kind of punches their ticket into the qualification. Exactly. We're trying to give people an incentive to keep playing or play once if they did really well, then they don't have to keep playing. But yeah, at the end of the season, we're also giving away a prize to the top 10 point getters. So there's an incentive to keep playing week by week. That's great. Well, this is really cool, Jake. I mean, I love, I know a lot of our recreational poker fans um, love the idea of playing in these like friendly games, uh, these competitions with other people. And the idea that you can just play for free, practice your poker game, and then actually, you know, use your skills to, to win real money. I think that's going to, that's that people, people love that. Of course. How yeah. could they not? It's fantastic. Yeah, why not? Good for you, man. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yep, and then we got some really exciting stuff, hopefully, at the end of the year, uh, which will be more of a, like, club model, but I won't give anything away there because we're still working on it. Um, yep. I hope to see the Rec Poker family on, on Unshuffled here in the, in the near future, and then I'll see you in three weeks or a month. Okay, right on. Well, thanks again, Jake, and uh, yeah. thanks, everyone else. Go Padres. Yeah, all right. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. That's you.